So hi everyone. I thought this week on my big grant project video series here, we'd take a look at um, some of my history as a composer and kind of a day in the life therein. So like most artists, I have a regular job that pays the bills. So my regular job is in the organ industry. I consult on organ installations. I suggest products that are appropriate for customers. I design the installations. We arrange for those installations. I do a lot of the technical work. Uh, just this morning, I was down working on a pipe organ. And yesterday, I was up in a little town called Crow's Landing, which is off uh, I-5 near Newman and Patterson and San Anella and all those little towns along the north end of the I-5 corridor and I was fixing a digital organ and uh, what I like about that job is that it kind of keeps me close to what I love and uh, which is music and playing the organ so my typical days are not really typical days because depending on where my job in the organ industry takes me uh, I have to kind of give that number one priority and then I schedule my activities as a composer and, and as a performer around all of that. So starting when I was a little kid, I started dabbling in trying to write music. And as a little kid, I had learned the tactic of being able to hear like either a major scale or a minor scale, and then being able to write those notes down uh, on a little note paper and I found that this was a great way that I could get left alone on the playground because if I was doodling in a notebook uh, everybody would kind of leave me alone because then I was the weird kid in the corner and so at any rate as uh, a teenager I took a job as a church music director and that went through into my adult years composing music and arranging music uh, for the various groups and ensembles that we had in whichever church I was working at at the time. That was kind of just part of the job. And then more recently, uh, I've taken to composing music where I'm using pipe organ sounds and I'm augmenting that with various digital effects to create uh, rhythmic patterns and immersive sounds that are simply not otherwise in, uh, otherwise possible. And that work, again, really stems from my childhood and my lifelong fascination with playing with sound. Uh, as a kid, I was if I found something that made a noise, I wanted to see how I could make it different. Um, if I heard a musical instrument I never heard before, I wanted to know what it was and how it worked. And, uh, um, you know, kids would try to build a soapbox race car and I was trying to build some sort of musical instrument. Um, I basically drove my parents crazy as a child. One of the things we had uh, when I was a kid, my brother and I in our room had this I'm not even sure what it was. I think it was part of an old World War II surplus radio system. You know, a great big box and vacuum tubes galore inside. And somehow we had hooked up a telephone to it and there was a little speaker on it and we could talk into the telephone and uh, hear our voice come out of the speaker. And uh, so, my dad, in a, in a moment of ambition, decided that over his two-week summer vacation from his job was going to remodel our bathroom. And my brother and I were in making all kinds of noises in this thing and uh, burping and so forth. And just ha having a grand time giggling and laughing at all of this. And my dad, in a very rare moment of patience, walked into the room and said, Boys, I think that is a marvelous toy, and you can play with it all you want when I go back to work. <laughs> so that was just the kind of kid I was. I was always wanting to experiment with sound and try to do new things with it. And so that affects my current 
adventures in musical composition because that's what I'm doing. I'm augmenting uh, different sounds. So on any given day, uh, one of the things I try to make sure I do, and on most every day, even if I've got a, you know, a job to repair an organ out of town or whatever, I try to get up early enough to at least do my finger exercises and that's becoming increasingly important as I get older. Uh, my hands are not, they need a little time to f get flexible and I have to do a lot of work to maintain uh, not just strength but dexterity and accuracy uh, in my hands. So we come over to, this is my, uh, what I call my live setup. And the main keyboard is this um, Studio Logic uh, SL88. And over on this laptop, I have a couple different pieces of software. Um, the laptop is reserved for special use. Uh, this laptop, first and foremost, is my work laptop in that it has various pieces of software on it that I need in the field when I'm working on certain types of organs. And so we have all of that in there and all those files. Uh, but I've also got uh, my piano software called Piano Tech. And I have an organ emulator software on here that I use when I'm giving uh, live performances of my work. Uh, so every day, first thing, get a cup of coffee. Um, I spend a few moments in meditation to get my mind clear, and then I do the, the Hannon exercises. Uh, these are really good for uh, maintaining my hand dexterity and accuracy and all that good stuff. And so uh, they're just these little simple exercises. <laughs> one of them like that and just different patterns and I find that it's helping me maintain my uh, accuracy, my consistency, and just my general strength uh, in being able to play. So when I'm done with that then I can go on to other things and we kind of reconfigure this whole setup. be the live performance set up for my original music and then we can shut down the piano and bring up the organ. So when I'm working on a piece of new music, when I'm working on a new idea, uh, I frequently am over here kind of experimenting. I have my pipe organ sounds on the Hotberk software. Uh, I have my uh, keyboards where I can uh, call up different sounds and uh, play them. And over here I have my effects processor, I've got my looper, and we're going to take a closer look at all of this equipment in subsequent videos. But for today, I can go, what I typically do when I have a new idea, I'll experiment here and kind of flesh out that idea, or I may just flat experiment inside the recording software. And we took a look at, little look at that uh, last time. And we have the Roland C200, which is also a pipe organ emulator. And we can pull different sounds up here and uh, do different things in the computer to play with that. And that would be where I would experiment with the recording of everything and that's how we kind of flesh out a piece of music. So this particular project I received a grant for from the city of Fresno and the reason I received a grant to do this project was because a lot of other people are involved in it. The purpose of the grant 
was to see that artists got paid for their efforts in providing some type of work that benefited the public. And so most of the grant funds that I've received are going to go to other people, singers, the recording studio, all of these other operations. There is a small stipend for me that is set aside in the, in the, in the grant budget and we'll see at the end when everything else is paid for uh, if I get uh, to keep a small part of that. So back when I was composing for the church, it was simply just part of my job. And so if I was in a situation where, say, Easter was coming and I needed music and maybe my choir wasn't up to that piece by Gabriel Fauré, uh, I would write something of my own instead. Uh, I wrote any number of church hymns and things. Uh, and uh, at some point I got it all together and put together a whole... Uh, package with a demo tape and sent it off. I think there were three or four publishing houses that published music for the Catholic Church and it was it was all flatly rejected um, and any rate but that was just part of the job and so that's what I did. Since uh, I stopped doing that kind of work for the church and since then um, I have dabbled in songwriting and composing, but it's only been in the last five or six years that I started doing something where I really felt like, okay, I'm doing something that's unique. I'm really proud of it. So at this point, I've got two albums out. I have this project that um, I'm not giving too many details just yet. We'll, we'll find that out uh, along the way. But at any rate, it's about a major... Uh, NASA space mission and we're doing a film and a mus uh, musical score uh, for a nice half hour piece that will be ready for PBS and other public broadcasting as well as schools and organizations and all of that kind of stuff. So starting next week we're going to take a deep dive into my live performance rig. It's one thing to create music in the computer where you have every tool and trick uh, at your disposal and you can augment yourself into a hundred piece orchestra. It's quite another thing to work that music out in such a way that it can be performed live. And these days technology is a part of the whole game and so there's a lot of technology to go through and we're going to kind of go through it a chunk at a time. So anyway. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.